Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unusual Instruments that I don't know how to play. I'm your host, Mr. Jamie. So for today's episode, we're going to take a look at the flute family and some flute-related instruments. Obviously, the tambourine is not one of them. Just did that for fun on the opening. So let's take a look at something a little unusual. And let me do a disclaimer here. When I say unusual, we really mean not common. Not necessarily strange or odd. I don't want anyone to think that their instrument is strange or odd. Just not common is really what I mean by unusual. And for our first instrument, we're going to take a trip to Japan, sort of. It actually originates from China, but then uh, around the 7th century was brought to Japan. And this is, hold on a second, I actually have this written down because I can't remember it. And forgive my pronunciation, shakuhachi. I think that's correct, but I'm not positive. This is a shakuhachi flute, uh, Japanese and Chinese origin. That is this instrument right here. Get closer to the camera so you can see. It largely looks like a regular flute, but something if you know about flutes, you might notice there's no hole here for blowing like this. And there's no fipple area. A fipple is kind of like a whistle area. Usually uh, flutes that don't have the hole here have a fipple here where the mouthpiece curves up. And there's nothing like that. What there is is there's a cut right here. And that cut is what's going to make the sound happen. Now, because the sound happens that way, it's actually kind of difficult to play. And it said these were used by Japanese and Chinese monks for concentration. And it is, as I said, it's not an easy instrument to play. Um, and with that, let me also do my other disclaimer. When I say instruments I don't play, I mean that I do not know the proper notes, proper fingerings, and stuff to play the instrument. I am going to make sound on the instrument, and you might think music, um, but I don't actually know the logistics of playing the instrument. So that's what I mean when I say I don't play. Now back to our regular scheduled program. So you have to position it kind of on your chin, Get your lip kind of part way near that tight hole like on a regular flute and blow across that little cut. As I said, it's hard to do. Almost got it, sorry. Okay, so I just said uh, I, I can make noises on them, but on this one right now I can't. <laughs> I have made noises on it, so let's try again. I think that's about what I'm going to get out of that. Uh, I say not easy to play and I'm getting dizzy already. Um, taking a lot of air. So that is, again, let me get the name. That is the Shakuhachi. Shak shakuhachi or something hopefully close to that. Said so my pronunciation may not be very good. So I got this at an antique store in your county. Uh, that's Virginia. I'm in Virginia, United States. In York County, there was an antique, it's a bookstore, books and antique store up there on the Riverwalk area. And he actually had a couple of these. I thought this was the prettiest one, and that's the one I got. And a uh, pretty good price on it, too. That tambourine, by the way, I started with, which I love. It's the best tambourine I have. Also got that there for a really good price. All right, so that's an instrument I do not play. At least not well. <laughs> Let's take a look at some other flutes. Um, not so unusual is this right here. Um, you're probably used to seeing plastic ones, so it's kind of unusual that this is wood. And I'm doing a couple flutes here that really don't fit the category because I can play this. This is not one that I can't play. And said it's not that unusual. Uh, you may already know what it is. You may not because you usually see them in plastic. This is a more 
higher quality one. This is a more higher quality one. Yeah, good English there. This is a higher quality one. This is what today is known as the recorder. The official name is the Dolce Flute, or translated that means sweet flute. It was also known as the English flute in 18th century America. And this is the soprano. I'll play you a quick something. I actually uh, did used to play for Colonial Williamsburg quite some time ago. And so this is an 18th century dance, or what I remember of it. Sorry, I didn't quite remember the ending there. Got a little stuck, but that's the idea. And I also don't remember what song that is. Um, just one that's stuck in my brain really well. Anyways, you're probably familiar with recorders. This is a wood recorder, a little better sound, hopefully. Hopefully you think it sounds better than the plastic recorders. Though this uh, wood one is only, is I believe, under $20, so it's not exactly that much higher quality. But wood does make a big difference in sound. Now this one is not wood. <laughs> Uh, the bigger they get, the more expensive they get, of course. Um, this one is plastic. This uh, you may not be as familiar with. It is also a recorder, but it's a larger recorder. This is the Alto recorder. Unfortunately, those are the only two sizes I've had. I have. Um, I did get the opportunity to play a tenor in college. I love the sound of that, but I don't have one. So um, let's make kind of a, this is just more of an improv uh, sailor type song. And how about we play both of them at once? You can't be a recorder player unless you do this. That's a joke, by the way. There really is, I think, no situation professionally where you would be required to play two at once. Plus, you can only finger three holes in the thumb hole. Now, of course, the other thing they do is play through their nose. I'm not going to do that. Just not my kind of thing, but that's the other recorder trick is to play through the notes. So enough with recorders. So you're probably at least somewhat familiar. You were probably forced to play one. Uh, I hate the fact that I have to say forced, but let's face it, most of you were probably forced. It was good for you. We won't get into that. Music education, you may think, yeah, why did I have to do that? But it was really good for you. Just uh, know that. I'm, just, I'm not going to go into all that right now. Let's go on. And some of my favorite instruments, I, I don't have the huge one here that I love the most. It's at my office. We'll have to get that another time. But we've got a couple more flutes here. This, uh, you also notice this doesn't have, well, it sort of has a, it doesn't really have a fiddle, but it kind of curves there. What it has is, well, I should reword that. It doesn't have a fiddle here. What it has is a, Two hole combination that's covered up by this thing that causes the whistle sound to make the sound happen as it goes through here. This is a Native American, some people would say Indian flute, but uh, to, to be clear that we're talking about Native American Indians, we'll just say Native Americans. And not this is not from India. So this is a Native American flute. And again, this is this does fit the category of pretty unusual instruments. You probably haven't seen one of these, though you might have. Um, this is from Tennessee. I picked this up from a Native American shop in Tennessee, in the mountain area. And this is an instrument I do know how to play, at least to some extent. So I'm actually going to play you, hopefully, something that sounds good. It's actually, uh, if you put a little reverb on that, in fact, I might do that. Maybe right here, just so you can hear the difference, I'll cut in a repeat of that. And we'll put some reverb on it, because it sounds really cool when you add reverb to these.
All right, we've got another one. This is also a Native American flute, larger one. I am also got it in Tennessee from a Native American shop, not the same shop, different shops, but they're both in the mountain areas of Tennessee. And... And you'll hear with that the principle of a flute that is not principal, but principal, P-L-E. That is the longer and larger it is, the lower the sound's going to be. So this one is lower and this one was higher. And you can see the size difference there, as was the case in the recorders. For the last instrument we're going to look at for today's program, we visit uh, Montepicho in Peru. I've actually never visited Monte Picchu in Peru, but that would be an awesome place to go. However, an adult student of mine did visit Monte Picchu and she brought me back a Monte Picchu pan flute. So pan flute, not all that unusual, but there's a good chance you may not have really seen one. Um, more likely to have seen it in a cartoon, I think, than in actual life. Trying to hold that close enough for you to see well. Got some nice little designs on it too. Um, this did uh, come from a gift shop, I'm told. So as far as its playability, it may not be tuned properly. Um, if it is, the tuning is not what we would call Western tuning. It's not following a major minor scale, definitely. And so while I might be able to play a, a westernly tuned pan pipe, pan flute, sorry I said that wrong. Uh, this one I do not know how to play. Um, some of these I can't even make a sound on, but let's see what we can do. All right, so the, the higher row I do better with. The lower row, I guess really, I guess you're supposed to hold it this way so you can get to both rows. The flipping around for me is a lot easier to get to that. That gives you an idea, anyways, of a Peruvian pan flute. All right, so that's going to conclude today's episode of Unusual Instruments that I don't know how to play and a couple I do know how to play as well. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Unusual Instruments I Don't Know How to Play. And as always, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.